Hello and welcome to our service here at Tableview United today. There aren't many announcements to make. Uh, the only one really is that next week we are having our um, first Mission Awareness Sunday for 2022. We will be hearing from Andre and Peggy Kritzinger who work for Operation Mobilization. They are members here at the congregation. And from the 15th of January to the 15th of February, they, they were in Lesotho connecting with Operation Mobilization up there and the ministry there. And we'll be hearing from them next week. Now, to be fair, I need to be honest with you, as, as per this recording, I don't quite know whether we're going to record the service there or if we're going to, how we're going to work getting the content out to you. Um, but please stand by uh, and, and, and keep an eye open if something comes along. If not, we'll send a message out to the congregation and just explain uh, what's going to be happening with that. Um, other than that, there is no real announcement to make. Uh, it was Ash Wednesday on this, or well, this past Wednesday, obviously. Um, and so it marks the beginning of Lent for many Christians around the world. Lent is a time of preparation as we come up to Easter. It is very similar to that of Advent as we come to Christmas. And so for the time being, what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks and, and what we're going to be talking about is the gospel. We're going to be touching on that today and really just diving into the real practicalities of what the gospel is and what it does for us. Um, and so we're going to be looking at that over the next few weeks, uh, running up to Easter, maybe even just a bit after Easter, and looking at the impact of the gospel uh, on the world today. But welcome to worship. It is always good to glorify and worship our Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit with these people here on earth. And so as we come to worship, let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your constant presence in our lives. We thank you that you are a God who is near, a God who is involved, a God who is active, not one who is removed and distant from his creation and from his people. And so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that we can come before you this morning, Worshipping and glorifying your name. Lord, in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our actions and our deeds, be glorified as we come with your people to worship you today. May the word that we hear today be empowering and life-changing. And Father God, we just pray for your blessing over this time. We just ask us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sing with me, and can it be?
thank you for your constant seeking after us, for your unending love and compassion that you have for us, a love that drove you to send your only son to come and die to pay the price for our forgiveness. And so Lord Jesus, we thank you for your obedience, that through you we may be forgiven. We are sorry, Lord Jesus, for the many times in our lives when we take that forgiveness, that love, and that sacrifice for granted. And so forgive us, we pray, for the times in our lives that we have turned against you and sinned. Holy Spirit, work deeply in us to bring to mind those times that we have sinned. And bring us to this point of repentance. So we can truly and honestly say, Father, forgive me. For that which I have done. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that when your people turn to you, when we seek mercy and grace and forgiveness, you give it to us completely. And so may we know that when we turn to you and ask forgiveness, we are forgiven completely, wholly, immediately, and freely. And so we thank you for your sacrifice, our Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, work within us now as we hear your word. Transform us, help us understand more what it is that you have done for us and the beauty of your gospel. We pray as all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What I'm about to tell you is deeply personal. It's something I've only shared with a few people. And it scares me a little knowing that this is something which God has laid on my heart to tell you. Unfortunately, it is time for me to say this. 
My name is Andrew Nicholas Snyders, and I'm an addict. This addiction of mine is something that I've been struggling with my whole life. It has caused issues in many of my relationships, including my relationship with God, my family, especially my parents, my friends, and generally those people around me. Sometimes I would try and kick this addiction because it would frustrate me that it would have such a strong control on my life. But then either one of two things happen. Either I'm shunned by some of those people around me who look at me and try to give me, get me to give into temptation again. Or I just miss the plot completely on my own and give in quite soon again. At one stage, it became really bad. And as difficult as it is to admit, it actually caused someone who cared very deeply for me to lose their life. It was a result of this person standing up and saying that they are tired of seeing how this addiction controls my life and controls me the way it does. And they decided to do something about it. And actually, he lost his life in that process. It's something that haunts me to this very day. And something that hurts me inside often when I realize this had to happen just because I sometimes lose control. And not even just sometimes. Often. So let me just give you a picture of what it's like inside my head sometimes. Those conversations I have with myself late at night or when I'm in the shower alone. Those times when I'm alone and my mind just brings up everything that I've done. But to do this, I want to take us to some scripture. Because there are some passages that perfectly highlight these conversations in my head. The first passage is that of Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 24. So if you can turn there... So long. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 24. The second passage is from uh, Psalm 22. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 24. Paul writes this. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. And what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but the sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin who, living in me that does it. So I find this work this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner to the law of sin at work in me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me? From this body that is subject to death. The second reading is from the book of Psalm, Psalm 22, verse 6 to 8. David writes, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults at me, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can leave the passage open at the psalm, the, the psalm passage. These two passages clearly highlight the way I feel inside sometimes. I have this continual inner conflict, trying to make sense of why I keep on doing what I do. And the question that Paul asks is a question I often ask myself. Why do I not do what is right and what I want to do? And why do I do those things which are wrong and which I do not want to do? This invariably leads me into some downward spiral thinking. Where it starts off with me trying to figure out why I give in to this addiction of mine. Which leads me to saying that I'm either too weak to change or I do not want to change. Which leads me to asking how it's possible for me to lead people in the church if I'm like this. Which leads me to thinking that I'm not at all the right person for the job. Which leads me to thinking that I'm just a horrible person and a fake. Which then leads me to calling myself, as David did, a worm. It actually hurts me inside when people say that I'm a good person. And that they can see God in me. Because I say to myself, well, if only you knew what was actually in me. I had this experience at the aquarium where I volunteered a few years ago. When one of the staff members said that I'm a lacquer example of a Christian. And actually one of the best ones that they have met as I'm not too extreme. And this bummed me out a little bit actually. Because as I thought it, about it, I said to myself, If I'm the best example for them, then there's no hope for them at all. It is so difficult to carry the burden of my addiction alone. I've chatted with God about it, and I know He helps me out, but often it's still my decision to do something about it. And I just give in time and time again. God wants to help me, but I often say to Him that it is something I need to do alone. And that I just push him aside and, and, and then I feel sorry for myself that I have to do this all alone. And it's such a difficult thing to admit that when I do feel that things are getting too rough. And that I now need to tell someone. I say that I cannot because I cannot let them know that I'm struggling with this. And have been for most of my life. So because of all the potentially bad situations I created in my head. And because I try so hard to do this in my own strength, I then end up having to carry this burden alone for much longer than Jesus intended me to do. However, I've decided that this addiction of mine will no longer be a cause for secrecy in my life. It will also no longer control my life or affect my life negatively. I have previously not been living life. Well, I've been living a dying life. But I choose to live a real, living, breathing, healthy life. And so I want to admit the following to you. Hi, my name is Andrew Nicholas Snyders. And I am a sin addict. This addiction of mine is something that I've been struggling with all my life. It has caused issues within many of my relationships, including my relationship with God, my family, especially my parents, my friends, and generally those people around me. Sometimes I try to kick this addiction because it would frustrate me that it would have such a strong control on my life. But then either one of two things would happen. Either I'm shunned by some of those people around me, who look at me and try to give into the try to get me to give into the temptation again, or I just miss the plot on my own and give in quite soon again. At one stage, it became really bad, and as difficult as it is to admit, it actually caused someone who cared very deeply for me to lose their life. This person was Jesus. 
It was a result of Jesus standing up and saying that he's tired of how this addiction controls me the way that it does. And he tried to do something about it, that he actually lost his life in the process. It's something that haunts me and something that hurts me inside often when I realize this had to happen just because I sometimes lose control and not even just sometimes, often. Now I must admit, I did not read the complete passages of scripture that I read earlier. The passage in Romans goes on to read the following. I'm just going to look at the first half of verse 25. Don't worry about turning there. Remember verse 24 of the Romans passage said, What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? But the passage continues and says, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus came to save us. And thanks to Jesus, I am now a recovering addict. Each and every day is a struggle. And sometimes I will relapse. But with Jesus' love and encouragement, I stand up every time. I take up my cross and I continue to follow him. I celebrate on the path because I know that even though I might fall, there is no condemnation now. I also ask you to keep the psalm passage open because I want to read the next three verses for you. Remember we is left off with David feeling like a worm, with people mocking him and hurling insults at him. Then he goes on to say something that we all need to remember on a bad day. Those days when we have done the process of convincing ourselves that we are worthless and undeserving of any love. We need to tell ourselves the following. So if you want to read along as I read Psalm 22 verse 9 to 11. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. When you feel like today is just not a good day and your addiction is getting the better of you, remember that God knows you inside and out. You are beautiful. And you are wonderfully made. God is never far from you. But it's all right to call out to him and ask him to be near. Remember, God will never leave you nor forsake you. There's one more passage I would like to read for you. And it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 16 to 21. Paul says this. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. All this is from God, 
who has reconciled himself to us, uh, reconciled us to himself through Christ. Wow. Our relationship with God was broken. But now we are reconciled to him. That doesn't mean he has forgiven us and he just tolerates us now. He has forgiven us and he wants us around all the time. God wants you to be with you. With, God wants you to be with him. He loves you so much that he is the only one who continuously seeks your face. Even though you might not want to seek his. He's your, your daddy. And once he gets hold of you, he never lets go. Have you got what I'm trying to say to you? Try as you like. God is never leaving you alone. You are his and he loves you. 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 Because we are reconciled to God. Our old selves are now dead. We can take off our old, uncomfortable, black, dead clothes. And we can wear our new, white, clean clothes. Psalm 30 verse 11 talks about God turning our mourning into dancing. You see these horrible, dead black funeral clothes, these dead old self of yours, these don't belong anywhere near you. They belong at the foot of the cross. This dead self of yours belongs at the foot of the cross. Jesus is taking care of that. It is no longer your burden to carry, it's not your battle to fight. Put it at the foot of the cross. That is where it belongs. You are a new creation. Dressed in white. Remember. Jesus loves you. God wants you. He wants you with his whole heart. He loves you so much that Jesus died for you. You are a new creation. Your old addictive self is gone. Your new self is here. The great thing about being a new creation is that you trade one addiction for another. You trade your sin addiction for your love addiction. Christians have this thing about being addicted to love. We love to love. We love giving love and we love receiving love. As it's the one, one of the ways that we experience God. Through love and Fellowship and teaching. We need to be addicted to things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are things in God's heart. We must be those people after God's own heart. I would like to end off with a song. But we're just going to sing a cappella. There's not going to be a backing track. And this song reminds us that we are loved. Trust me, you should know the song. So let's sing along. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Hi, my name is Andrew Nicholas Snyders. 
and I am a forgiven sinner and a Jesus addict. Who are you? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your ministry of reconcilia reconciliation. The fact that you have brought us back into your presence through the death of your son, Jesus Christ. That we don't have to be weighed down by our sinful natures, but can be living in this life of new creation. Celebrating who you are and living life to the full as you have promised that we will. So thank you, Father, for this promise that when we reach out to you, we will be saved. As Paul writes, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ in Lord is Lord and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So Holy Spirit, work deeply in the hearts and the minds of everybody who is here watching and listening. Father, if there are those who have not yet made a commitment to you, bring them to that point, Father God, to just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. We thank you for those of us whom you have saved long ago. We have been able to journey for you, with you for years. And we are sorry, Father God, for the times that we crawl back to our sinful natures at the foot of a cross, wanting to put back on those clothes. But Father, may we learn to leave that with you and to trust you to deal with that in the right way so that we may be free in your presence. Father God, may we go into the world and proclaim this freedom and this good news into the world. So the people who desperately need hope and love and forgiveness in their life can find that hope, love and forgiveness in you. And so Father, use us, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our guide and counsellor, be with you now and forevermore. Amen.